Now then guys, as going, I hope you're all keeping really, really well. Uh, I've got another continuation of my last video's experimentation into shooting with just a UV IR cut filter. And I'm hopeful that tonight's target, let's just jump over into it, um, is going to be one that you're going to enjoy seeing. Um, I'd whittled my options down once I'd learned I was going to get a clear night tonight down to two possibles. So it was VDB 152, which is this region right here you can't really see much at the minute so i'll just stretch the view for you this is using telescopius by the way to uh, plan all this out the field of view is from a celestron raster 11 and a player one poseidon c pro um as you can see this is a really interesting region uh, a very faint region though too so there's a, a pillar of dark nebulosity this dusty region right here there is a an end to it which is a reflection nebula right there with a little bit of a wispy tail going off to the side there is a long streak of HA going through the frame and also a planetary nebula remnant, I do believe, down at the bottom right there. A friend of mine a little while back just shot this, uh, Daniel Mintz, and he took a really wonderful shot of it from his location. It was a bit of an inspiration for me. I want to take a look at that too at some point. So uh, thanks, Dan, if you see this. Um, but as you've probably already seen from the uh, thumbnail of this video, this isn't actually what I settled on shooting. I thought that this was probably going to be such a challenging target. I'd really best save it for a maybe a multi-night attempt. Um, this is hopefully going to be just a one and done as I don't know when my next clear night is going to be. So, settled on, of course, the Cocoon Nebula. Uh, one of the other reasons I wanted to do this is because I've got a reference point for it. I've already shot it once before. Um... Well, a few times before throughout the years, but once recently. I've got a good point to compare it against uh, once I shot it with a dual narrowband filter. So, this standard UV IR cut filtered shot that we're hopefully going to get tonight if the weather holds. Um, should be a nice comparison for me to make and also a pretty image for you guys at the end. Now, um, this is the kind of framing that I went with, of course, just putting it across to one side. Sort of mimicking my previous best shot, but I wanted to capture some of the reflection nebulosity uh, in this target rather than just the sheer emission nebula uh, kind of regions of it like I did last time. Um, I want to catch some more of the pink colorations that come through in standard broadband shots of it and I really want to see if I can capture this very dark tail that kind of shifts off to one side while just using a UVI cut filter. Um, I'm hopeful by the way that this is going to turn out pretty well. Now here was the previous best shot taken with um, a, just a dual narrowband filter, basically. One shot color camera and my Rasa 8, I do believe at the time, so it was another fast, fast telescope. Turned out all right, you can see some of that tail kicking off up to the side there. You can certainly see plenty of detail in the Cocoon Nebula itself, but it is, it's, you know, it's much of a muchness. It's all just kind of one main kind of coloration and not much going on aside from that, as you would expect perfectly honestly, we're just shooting it with a, uh, a dual narrowband filter. So I'm hoping for a bit more of a dynamic image by shooting it in this way, if we can punch through the light pollution and make the capture that I'm hoping for. Now, uh, I've been shooting it for a little bit tonight, so I've probably got 30, 40 minutes on it already. So we've got a little bit of a head start, but not much. Um, I did at the start of the night, by the way, take a, a test exposure on the region I mentioned before. VDB 152 and hopefully if this just loads up in a moment I'll be able to show you so this was a three minute test exposure and you can see the reflection nebula popped up just fine on the end right there uh, as did though hopefully this is coming through on the uh, compressed video you're undoubtedly seeing through YouTube um, but some of the pillar of dust is also visible in a single three minute sub so I'm pretty hopeful that I could make a future shot of this, at least on a, you know, a moon-free night and maybe, I don't know, make it into a 10-hour project or something like that, give it a real good chance at turning out. I think I can see some remnant just there of that planetary nebula too, a little bit of the HA, but I can't see any of the fleck going up to the side, but again, one of those things we can try at a future date if people are interested in seeing if it's even possible from this kind of location. But the target we did settle on, of course, the cocoon, is turning out all right, I would say. So um, immediately noticeable is that there is a lot more of these blue tones kicking in around the edges. So I'm extremely hopeful 
that with a little bit of stacking, these are going to come out quite clean, and we should end up with that image that I was really hoping for. A nice dynamic, colourful, but still natural looking shot as I find them really appealing just recently uh, and I want to kind of do more of that if these experiments keep working. Um, the tail is certainly starting to become visible. I'm hoping that, you know, as has been the case in my last images, I can calibrate out this donut nice and cleanly with some uh, some good flats and bias. I'm hoping that continues on with this because uh, I'm going to need to do some serious stretching to really bring that tail out. So it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but if the data does look good, by the way, I don't see any reason that I can't do a um, a future video, perhaps where it's another day to share and a process along, that kind of thing. Uh, I know a few people have been enjoying those, and I enjoy making them too, because it's just a good way to share what I'm doing and hopefully help out some people in the uh, in the process, you know what I mean? Uh, get a bit of a leg up on processing uh, and a jump start kind of thing. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to keep shooting this as long as I possibly can. Again. Real quickly, uh, Player One Poseidon C Pro, Slash Run Raster 11, and a UV IR cut filter from Bada in this case. It's just what I happen to have lying around, uh, and that's all we're running with. So it's a pretty, pretty um, bare bones setup, if you will. Some nice quality equipment, but certainly no special filtration and very much no special skies. Uh, Portal 7, right here at home. So. That's about it, guys. I, I won't keep you any longer. I'll just say, as always, I appreciate your time um, a great deal. And I appreciate all the support that you give me, too. I, uh, hand on heart, I really do mean that. Um, so, I'll leave you there, hopefully, with a nice image at the end of this. Um, and you know what? Even if it isn't, it doesn't matter. That's, that's kind of the spirit of experimentation. And really, it doesn't matter to me. It's all just about having some fun and sharing my evening with you guys, and that's what we're doing. So it doesn't always have to be a flashy major production video, you know what I mean? Or at least I hope it doesn't matter to you guys too much. So, um, that's about it. I've said it five times now. <laughs> I really am going. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for your support, and look after yourselves, guys. Close, guys. <laughs>